the shipping sector's new climate goal. Last week, at a meeting at the International Maritime Organization in London, countries agreed on the first ever climate goal for shipping. The target is to cut shipping greenhouse gas emissions by at least 50% by 2050. But is this ambitious enough to be in line with the Paris Agreement on climate change? Shipping emitted around 2.5% of global CO2 emissions in 2015, but emissions could more than triple by 2050 without efforts to limit them. By one estimate, this means shipping could consume more than a sixth of the 1.5 degree carbon budget by 2050. The shipping sector wasn't included in the Paris Agreement, the landmark global climate deal agreed in 2015. That's because responsibility for curbing marine emissions had been handed to the IMO 20 years earlier, under the Kyoto Protocol. But it took until last week for countries to reach consensus on a climate deal for shipping. They agreed to cut greenhouse gas emissions at least 50% by 2050, compared to 2008 levels, with a view to phasing them out later on. Several countries had argued for much greater ambition. Pacific island states, such as the Marshall Islands, called for full decarbonisation by 2035, a 100% cut in emissions. The EU said a 70 to 100% cut by 2050 was the minimum needed to keep the shipping sector in line with the Paris Agreement. Yes, we had a um, big ambition gap and big gap in terms of position on different countries. On the one hand side, we, on the one hand, we had um, coalition of high ambition led by European countries as well as South Pacific small island developing nations, vulnerable countries to climate change. On the other hand, we had um, countries like Panama, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Argentina, and uh, many other developing nations from Africa as well as um, South America, later joined by the United States, who um, were opposed to any emission reduction target in absolute terms. With these countries having resisted any form of emissions reduction target, Many still feel the current goal is a good start. Today's uh, adoption of the initial strategy by the IMO for us is in a way is historic because you know just to just the fact that you know a week, a month or a year ago we never thought that we would really come to this point where there in itself is an initial strategy.